Cisco instructor Andrea here, and today I would like to talk about wildcard masks. Uh, in a few chapters, we'll be using wildcard masks, and so I thought I'd get a jump on it. Normally, we use wildcard masks when we're talking about routing protocols and access control lists. We use wildcard masks to filter traffic whether it be a network address or actual IP hosts. So how does a subnet mask and a wildcard mask compare? With the subnet masks, if you remember, the subnet masks made up of all ones and zeros, we use the subnet mask to determine the network portion of a host address. So we use the subnet mask and we know wherever the ones are, that is our network. Wherever the zeros are, those are our hosts. So with a subnet mask, wherever we see a one, we know that we must match the network portion of that IP address. Wherever we see the zeros, that's going to match up to the host portion of the IPv4 address. A wildcard mask is going to use ones and zeros as well. However, we use them a little bit differently. With a wildcard mask, whenever we have a zero, we know that the zero means th that we must match the corresponding bit in that address. So it's almost the reverse of a subnet mask. Whereas with the subnet mask, when I see a one, I know that that must be part of the network. Wildcard mask, if I see a zero, then I know I must match that part of the address not necessarily just as it relates to network addresses, but any addresses, and I'll point that out as we go. If I have a one in the wildcard mask, what that means is anything where there's a corresponding bit value of a one, that means that is not important to me. I don't really care about it. So whether it gets through or doesn't get through or comes to me or doesn't come to me, it doesn't matter. Wherever I see a one, I'm going to ignore it. So whenever we need to solve for the wildcard mask, we're still using binary, just like we did with the subnet mask. For every subnet mask, there is a corresponding wildcard mask. So you know, we've looked at slash eights, slash nines, slash tens, slash 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, so for every subnet mask, we will have a corresponding wildcard mask. One shortcut method to determine the wildcard mask is to subtract the subnet mask from the value of 255, 255, 255, 255. So what do I know about that? All that means is that every bit value is turned on in each octet, right? Because we know 128 plus 64 plus 32 plus 16 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 is 1 is 255. So if I have a network address of 192.168.1.0 a slash 24, then I know my subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. So if I use this shortcut, then I'm going to subtract this subnet mask from this value. So what's the wildcard mask? Here, I take 255, 255, 255, 255. I subtract the wildcard mask of this network, which is minus 255, 255, 255, And what do I get? A zero, a zero, a zero. And then zero from 255 is 255. So my wildcard mask is 0.0.0.255. Fairly easy, right? Now let's do it in binary. So now let's say I have a subnet mask of 255, 255, 255, 128. I know that the slash notation for that would be a slash 25. All right, so let's just take a look. I'm going to break this apart so we can put it in a table format. So here I've got 255, 255, 255, 128. If I put that in table format, you'll notice right here, these are the subnet mask bits. 
one, 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 because I know they're all on, right? Same thing here, 255, these bits are on. 255, these bits are on. Over here, my 128, only one bit is on. The rest are host bits, and they're all off. So I just convert. Wherever there was a one for the wildcard mask, it becomes a zero. Wherever there is a one, it becomes a zero. And I just do that all the way across. I'm in the fourth octet. This one becomes a zero. Now these zeros become ones. Now this is my wild card mask. So my wild card mask is 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.127. Where do I get the 127? I simply add 64 plus 32 plus 16 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1, and that equals 127. A little shortcut for wildcard masks is I can look at the last network bit that was on and just subtract 1 from it, and that will also give me the remainder or the wildcard mask. So this was a 128. If I subtract 1, that gives me 127. So what does this wildcard mask mean? What this means is wherever there's a 0, that value must match. So with the 192.168.1.0.0, that means 192 must match, 168 must match, the 1 must match, and because this was on, with the zero here, that must match. But any of these hosts could get through. Any of the hosts could get through because remember, with a wildcard mask, wherever there's a one, I don't really care about it. I'm like, eh, you can get through. Routers use wildcard masks for filtering IP networks and hosts. That's what they do. That's why we use them. So again, wherever I have a zero in the wildcard mask, that means that value must be matched. Wherever I have a one, I can ignore it. Let's see how this works in practice. So let's say I have a network address of 192.168.3.0 a slash 24. So notice that's coming off R2 right here, okay? And if I want to allow all of the hosts from that network to access my internet over here, right? How can I filter the traffic on R2 so that only these hosts will be allowed through? Because let's say I don't want these to get through and I don't want the 2.0 network to get through, only the 3.0. How can I use a wildcard mask to do that? So I know that with a 24 subnet mask, my hosts will be addresses 192.168.3.1 through .255 because I have two to the eighth host bits, right? So I get 255 addresses. So here's what my wildcard mask would look like. 192.168.3.0, wildcard mask 0.0.0.255. So what I'm telling the router is, if the router receives a packet from a PC with an IP address of 192.168.3.1 through 3.255, it will be allowed through because remember, wherever the ones are, I don't really care about it. The zero here must match. That means in order to get through, you must have a 192 in your first octet. This is a zero. In order for it to get through, it must have a 168 in the second octet. This value is zero. In order for it to get through, it must have a three in the third octet. These are all gonna translate to one, 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 one. I don't care about those. So that means anything from one through 255 will get through and be allowed to go to the internet. Let's look at this a little bit closer and see how it works. If a router receives a packet from 192.168.3.25, 
it will compare it to the wildcard mask within the router. So here we know that the 3.25 is probably a PC off of this network. Okay, so let's look, this is my network address in binary. We're gonna look at this in binary. I've got 192.168.3.0, that's my network address. Now I'm going to compare it to my host IP address, 192.168.3.25. Now let's go ahead and put our wildcard mask up here. What do I know about the wildcard mask? The wildcard mask says wherever I have zeros in my wildcard mask, the host and the network must match. So there, those match. My host and my network must match. This is matching. This is all matching. The zeros say that this must match. The zeros, again, say that anything in this octet must match, what it, which it does. Now here, the ones, the ones say that it doesn't matter whether or not these bits match these bits. When I have a one in the wildcard mask, it just tells me I don't care. So that's all that's happening right here is we just don't care. It will let anything through, any combination of ones and zeros. So I could have one, one, zero, zero, one, 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 zero, zero, zero. It doesn't matter. What if I only want to allow host addresses one through 15 through? Well, then I just need to use a different wildcard mask. What wildcard mask will cover hosts one through 15? Well, I know that that would be 000, zero, zero and then I've got 15, right? If I have 128 turned off, 64 turned off, 32 turned off, I have 16 turned off, but I have 8, 4, 2, and 1, that equals 15. So this wildcard mask will let any host address through with an address of a dot 1, dot 2, dot 3, dot 4, dot 5, dot 6, dot 7, dot 8, dot 9, dot 10, 11, dot 12, 13, dot 14, dot 15, okay? So there's my wildcard mask. Now let's ask the same question. If the router receives a packet from 192.168.3.25 and it compares it to the new wildcard mask, will that address be let through the router to get to the internet? Okay, there's my network address. Here's my IP host address. And here's my wildcard mask. What do we know? The zeros tell us that whatever is in the host IP address, it must match the network address, and it does. The zeros tell me whatever is in the host IP address, it must match the network, and it does. Wherever the zeros are, it tells me it must match the network address, and it does. Here we go again. Wherever the zeros are, it must match. What do you see? I've got a mismatch. Right here in this bit position, I've got a mismatch, so I've got a problem. Okay, if we keep going, wherever the ones in a wildcard mask is, that means it doesn't matter. But over here it does. So this address is not going to be let through because the wildcard mask is dictating that these bits must all match and they don't. Here we're good, but over here we're not. So 192.168.3.25 will not be let through the router with a wildcard mask of 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.15. It's a no-go. Well, that's it for our talk about wildcard masks today. I am going to follow this up with some additional samples, and we will work those problems out on a document tutorial.